Emphasis. <clears throat> How do I design with emphasis? All right. Question number one. The image that is on this first slide. Where does your eye go first? <clears throat> tick tock. Tick tock. Anyone? Anyone? Yeah, there is no emphasis in this one. The shapes of the apples, the oranges, <clears throat> every tomatoes, um, the colors, they're all kind of evenly dispersed and scattered all over. All those different elements of like shapes and colors, they're kind of evenly dispersed. So there is not one place that our eye actually lands. <clears throat> It's not necessarily a bad thing if you're creating patterns, but typically in the world of art, we, we wanna guide people somewhere. In a world without emphasis, we kinda of have this left-hand menagerie of shapes. They're just floating aimlessly around, looking for somewhere to land, um, and none of them are actually standing out. They're all actually kinda of competing for our attention. They're all about the same size. They repeat. <clears throat> so there's nothing really grabbing our attention until we do something to one of the elements. Okay. The element over here on the right hand side is a changing color. The color was changed so that it's different than all the other yellow ones with the black outline. And so we're now given a clue as to where to look. There are basically, <clears throat> I guess, six general ways to create emphasis. You could whittle it down to about four, and some of these could fit in different categories, but I'm just going to kind of breeze through the, the basic six that we tend to teach a lot. You can change things to make them stand out by size, texture, color, Position, how you place things, shape, orientation. Now, let's talk about some of these a little bit more in depth. <clears throat> Size can also be spoken in terms of proportion or scale of objects. So a change in size can create attention, but it needs to be something that's a little dramatic. It can't just be a little change. It needs to be significant enough that it stands out. So in the picture to the right here, the, the guy is standing out in front of everybody else. He is bigger than everybody else. Um, and so the size is tall enough in both directions, above and below, that we understand that he's got some importance to us uh, spatially. His scale or his proportion his size is different than all the others. <clears throat> the clue with emphasis is big enough changes, all right? If the change is subtle, we're not going to get it, all right? Your public, your viewing public needs to have something that's more obvious. So hit us over the head with it in some ways so we know where you want us to look. It's that adage of which one of these is not like the other ones. This is really obvious and it's absurdity too. Um, it's a gigantic fortune cookie uh, sitting on top of some city, right? First of all, that wouldn't really happen. And the absurdity of the scale was large enough to grab our attention as well. Color or texture and or. Um, sometimes you have the opportunity to work with color. Sometimes you're restricted to just black and white or grays. So texture is one way. Patterned texture or a surface texture could happen to kind of make something stand out. Uh, in this sample here, it's mostly by color. Okay. Obviously, if everything is not colored and something is, which one of these is not like the other? Some other examples of color changes, you know, some photography, some painting, some drawing. Okay, so it can happen in numerous ways. Position. 
We understand that if you put something in the middle of a page and point other objects at it, we will look at that object in the middle of the page. It works. It is the first solution that almost all human beings naturally think of when we think of emphasis. It works, so don't do it again. <laughs> okay, uh, we get it. Um, now try some other creative ways to position things so you get our attention without sticking it in the middle and pointing everything at it, okay? Now, <clears throat> the position is slightly off on one of these shapes. Which one of these is not like the other? You got it, the lonely little obtuse triangle over here that is out of position, see? Everybody else is all wonderfully lined up and he kind of went erk zoom to the right and he's throwing our eye off, which gets our attention, right? So if everything's wonderful and orderly, we're gonna notice the thing that's not the same. All right, shapes. It's so easy to play with different shapes, but if you just make one shape different amongst many that are similar, again, which one of these is not like the other ones? Looky there, circle amongst all the triangles or the triangle amongst all the circles, okay? <clears throat> They're gonna help us see what you want us to see. Dramatic differences. Orientation means how an object is turned, okay? So, for example, down here in this lower part, this is one that we saw earlier when I was doing the little overview. <clears throat> All of these squares are lined up, but this little guy has turned. His orientation has changed, right? Um, he is now on a pivot, right? So he stands out because he's not orderly or lined up with all the other ones, okay? How things are angled, <clears throat> all right, means a lot. Look how this, these two diagonal lines are angled, okay, are turned on an axis around this circle. Circles don't have directions, Neither do perfect squares, technically, because that became a diamond, right? So basically, this circle has different kinds of shapes that seem to be lining up with it. Look how this one is kind of lining up with it, and this one's lining up. Even these little diagonal lines up here in the upper right-hand corner there are coming. They're pointing down this direction. This angle is almost kind of pointing in this way. So the objects are turned and pointing in such a way that we get an idea of where they want us to look. Now, where do I put emphasis in my design space? So I've been given some kind of a space to create in, right? Miss Martin said, oh, you're going to do a design on such and such a size paper, or here's a square, or here's a rectangle. I want you to use a design of shapes in there, and one of those shapes has to stand out. Well, where the heck do I put it? Good question. That's when we come to what we call the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds imagines that there's this tic-tac-toe board on the design space. So the rectangle here is the large design space. Okay, these little intersections where my tic-tac-toe board kind of intersect, these are what I call hot spots, all right? It is important to place something of importance on one or two of those hot spots. We want to avoid, remember, placing things in the middle and having things point at it, right? Middle of the page, everything pointing at it, kind of already been done, thousands of times, okay? So the best way to, to create emphasis that isn't bullseye or right in the center is to place an object of interest, the thing that's different, on one or two 
of those intersections. All right. Did you know that this is where people tend to look first the most when viewing something? Look at that. 41% of people look up here in the upper left hot spot. I wonder why. Da, 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 da. Any takers? Any takers? <gasps> Some of you may have already thought of this. When we start to read as Americans in our English language, we tend to start top left and read to the right and work our way across, right? <clears throat> so it's not surprising that most people tend to look up here at this intersection first. All right. Does that mean you always have to put your emphasis up there in that upper left? No. I just thought it was an interesting fact and I just wanted to show it to you. All right. However, in this image, in this image, um, we see the placement of this photograph. The emphasis is the flower. All right. Notice how the flower's biggest blossom part is right there on the upper right intersection or hot spot. OK, part of its stem even touches a little bit of the hot spot right below it. Awesome. This keeps the flower out of the center. OK, it is not the bullseye because we do not want a bullseye. We want emphasis on a hot spot or two. All right. So when we start to design with shapes and objects and things, um, we need to always try to place objects at least at one of these four hot spot zones. Even this picture of an actual bullseye target <laughs> is following the rule of thirds in photography and design. Look, the bullseye is not in the middle of the design space. No, no, no. It is actually on the upper right-hand hot spot. <laughs> All right. So that is our goal, to make things stand out through size, through shape, through position, through how you orient or turn your objects. But also, where do we place them? We place them somewhere not in the center, but on one of those intersections of hot spots.